With the annexation of the West Bank on the ballot and segregationist campaign slogans, has Benjamin Netanyahu debunked Israel's claim of being a democracy? Hello and welcome to Bigger Than Five with me, Rida Fakhri. America's staunchest ally in the Middle East often claims to be its only democracy. But as Israelis went to the polls on Tuesday for the second time this year, some Israeli Arab voters boycotted the election in protest of what they see as a system that discriminates against them. Arabs are the largest but not the only minority in Israel. While they bear the greatest grievances toward the state, other minorities also say the Israeli political process sidelines them. In a few moments, we'll be speaking with a Republican presidential candidate here in the United States. But first, we caught up with Ayman Ode, an Israeli Arab member of the Knesset, whose parliamentary bloc could decide whether Netanyahu remains prime minister. نتنياهو يحرض ضدنا كما يتنفس كل يوم يحرض ضدنا اليوم حرض ضدنا موضوع وجود الكاميرات هو جزء من تحريض ضدنا بالانتخابات الأخيرة قال العرب يتدفقون بكميات في الحفلات إلى صديق اقتراع وهو يكذب وهو يعرف أنه يكذب انظر إلى نضال السود في أمريكا يوجد مجموعة مارتن لوثر كينغ ويوجد مجموعة مالكوم إكس انظر إلى جنوب إفريقيا توجد مجموعة الان سي المؤتمر الوطني الأفريقي توجد مجموعة مؤتمر الأفريقي العام ومجموعة ثالثة الوعي الأسود هذه الأمور طبيعية لدى كل الشعوب من الكيتوني شموفيلة المدينة هذه لا يشلف شكبار نكبعة بخوكي اليسود شل 1992 الشاب يريد إسقاط قانون القومية هدفه أن تكون الدولة فقط يهودية ولكن نحن عندما نفرض نفسنا في كل مكان أيضا في الجامعات أيضا بالمستشفيات أيضا في المحاكم أيضا في البرلمان في كل مرافق الحياة نحن نفرض واقعا ثنائي القومية بمواجهة عقلية الدولة اليهودية Joining us now from the U.S. presidential campaign trail to talk about the state of Israel's democratic process is former Congressman Joe Walsh, who is challenging President Trump for the Republican nomination in the 2020 election. Congressman Walsh, you are challenging President Trump in the next election, saying that you consider him unfit for office. Now, when it comes to Israel, you're on exactly the same page, though, aren't you? Yes, and it's good to be with you. This is one of those issues where the president and I do agree. Israel is our greatest, strongest ally. The security of Israel is more important than any other issue in the region. But even so, is it right for you and for President Trump to criticize American Jews who do not vote either for the Republican Party or who are not believed, in your words, to be pro-Israel enough. This is what you said when you were congressman. You said too many American Jews aren't as pro-Israel as they should be. And President Trump just a few weeks ago saying that American Jews who vote for Democrats are disloyal to Israel. Should they be judged on their loyalty to Israel? Well, no. And let me make a very important distinction. Uh, Donald Trump a few weeks ago said that if any Jewish American votes Democrat, they're either stupid or disloyal. I have never, ever said such a thing. I generally believe, and it's true, most American Jews do vote Democrat. And I think they vote Democrat for other reasons besides Israel. 
But I have never, ever said, and I never would say what President Trump has said, that American Jews are stupid or disloyal. Well, no, but that what was you've a said, horrible thing to say. Well, but what you've said sounds similar enough to what he has no. said. Do you think that all American Jews should be judged on how loyal they are to Israel, on their dual loyalty to Israel and the United States? No, and that's the point I was making. I think most American Jews no longer just vote on Israel. They vote on other issues. That's the point. I was trying to make a few years ago, and that's fine. That's just the way it is. All right. Well, a, a prominent American Jew, someone who's also running in the next U.S. election, Senator Bernie Sanders, he's been calling the Likud government right-wing and racist, and he's been urging the U.S. Congress to leverage the billions of dollars in military aid it gives to Israel every year to try to change what he says are Israel's policies uh, which are, in his words, of racist tendencies. Does he have a good point here? No, I would disagree very much with Bernie Sanders. I respect his opinion, but I disagree. Again, America is not some objective observer between two warring sides. We're on Israel's side, and the whole world needs to understand that. We stand with Israel first and foremost, and I don't believe there will ever be peace in the region until the rest of the world understands that we stand with Israel. But should U.S. taxpayers' money also be used to fund what the entire world, the United Nations, calls the illegal occupation of Palestinian land and what is now stated policy, at least for Benjamin Netanyahu, the annexation of parts of that illegally occupied land? Yeah, and that's not language I would use. I would not talk of any illegal occupation. When I was in Congress, I voted to cut off most foreign aid except for foreign aid to Israel, because Israel is our unique ally and they're surrounded. Come on now, they're a tiny little nation surrounded by a sea of tyranny. Israel always needs our support. But do you think that Israel should be for Jews only? Oh, gosh, no. And in fact, most of the Arabs who live in Israel are better off, happier, and more prosperous than any Arab-run country in the region. So you disagree with uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu? Because let me quote to you what he said just this year in April 2019, and he's repeated again during the campaign. He said, Israel is not a state for all its citizens. Israel is the nation state of the Jewish people and the Jewish people alone. Well, it is the, it is the Jewish state, but Israel welcomes all people and allows all people to live there. Israel always has. And I don't know if you've been there. I don't know how many of your viewers have been to Israel. But Israel's like the only state in that region where people of all denominations, all creeds, live relatively in peace. Well, that's, it's clearly, a wonderful not, that's experiment. clearly, well, Congressman, that's clearly not what Netanyahu is talking about. In fact, this is what he said again this year. He said the state of Israel is not a nation state of all its citizens. Other minorities have a national representation in other countries. So it isn't clearly a state for all its citizens. Uh, a bizarre notion of democracy, isn't it, for someone like you who is running to be U.S. president? Do you believe that this is democratic? I think it's the only democracy in the region. Well, following the same logic, though, do you think that uh, the United States should be for Christians only? Because that's clearly what Netanyahu is <laughs> saying. No. He's saying it should be just no. for the majority of its citizens. If, if, if that's what Netanyahu is saying, I would disagree with that. I don't believe that's what Netanyahu is saying. And uh, again, well, it is what he's saying. America, he, he has said well, it in a cabinet meeting, Congressman. He's also said it online. So do you or don't you agree with it? And do you believe that this is democratic? I'll answer you again. If that's what he said, I disagree with that. Israel, like America, should and does welcome people from all over the world who want to be free and tolerant of other people. You have been for the annexation of not just parts of the West Bank, which is what is his stated plan, but the entire West Bank. Yes. Do you still hold on to these views? Absolutely. Judaria, I don't call it the West Bank. I call it Judaria and Sumaria. And again, uh, that should be all Israeli land. And if that is all Israel, I will say again, 
that everybody that that's the only way you're going to get peace. Everybody of all creeds will live in that land in peace. If you do believe in democratic values, those enshrined in the U.S. Constitution, can you then advocate for the annexation of illegally occupied land in blatant contravention of international law? Yes, I believe it's Israeli land, and I believe that will be a key factor in the garnering peace in the region. Look, there will never be peace in the region until the Arab world accepts Israel's right to exist. How about we start there? All right, I think we have to leave it there. Former Congressman thank Joe you. Walsh, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Thank you so much. So why do some Israeli Arabs choose to boycott elections while others participate? We spoke to some of those who didn't vote to find out. لا بعتقد انها بتحميهم يعني تجربة 70 سنة بالكنيسة ما اثبتت نجاح يعني وعم نشوف انه القوانين العنصرية بعدها عم تتخذ مثل القانون القومي اللي اللي صوتوا عليه العام مخطط برافر اللي بلشوا فيه وقف مش لاسباب اللي خاصة بالتمثيل بالكنيسة هو وقف يعني مش هو ما الغوه بس هو توقف بشكل مرحلي بعرفش اذا برجع انه مفروض يرجع يكمل بعدين أنا بفكر إنه إسرائيل فيها مساحة ديمقراطية لا كمان للعرب وكمان لليهود بس مش بشكل متساوي بس في أشياء اللي هي مش متساوية زي ميزانيات مدارس ميزانيات مجالس محلية وتقسيم الميزانيات بشكل عام يعني. So then, can the Israeli Arab vote play a decisive role in shaping the next Israeli government? Joining me now to discuss this, Siraj Asi, a visiting fellow at Georgetown University and the author of The History and Politics of the Bedouin, and Sean Derns, a senior research analyst at CAMERA, the Committee for Accuracy in Middle East Reporting in America. Uh, Siraj Asi, you believe that Israeli Arab voters should boycott these elections, but isn't there more to lose than to gain by staying away from the polls? Uh, I agree with you, uh, uh, Arab citizens of Israel uh, represent uh, uh, a sixth of the electorate. They yield the power actually to uh, uh, unseat uh, Netanyahu and reshape Israel's future. And shouldn't if, they if use they that vote, power? If they, if they vote in uh, large numbers. Shouldn't they However, use that power? However, the cloud? problem, uh, 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 it's not just about Netanyahu. This, I think the, 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 the issue here runs deeper. Uh, Arabs are disenchanted with the, uh, Israel's uh, democracy, uh, especially after Israel uh, passed the nation-state law, which clearly states that Israel is the nation-state uh, uh, of uh, the, its Jewish citizens only, uh, and uh, uh, downgrades Arab citizens to a uh, uh, second-class uh, state. So many believe it's a sham democracy, Sean Derns. Right. Do you agree? And isn't a boycott exactly what Israeli hardliners would want to see? Well, uh, a boycott I don't think would do anybody any good. Uh, Israeli Arabs, of course, have full rights, and they serve on the Supreme Court. They ha hold great positions in government. Um, there is no reason why they should not vote, and it, early returns do indicate that actually voting by Israeli Arabs in this particular election has increased from the previous election six months ago. Well, but hold on, though. You say they have full rights, but clearly uh, there is major discrimination towards them, codified in the nation state law, and in fact, as many human rights organizations say, in dozens of other laws. Unfortunately, uh, that's not correct. There is no discrimination codified in the Jewish nation state law. When, Jew when Israel was recreated in 1948, it was clear that this was the Jewish homeland. And the Declaration of Independence allows for full rights. If you're an Israeli Arab, you can petition the Supreme Court directly. You can serve in Knesset. The third largest party the list 
is predominantly Arab but in the Knesset. But hold on, hold on though, Siraj Asi, do well, you agree? Because the Constitution in 1948 actually spoke about full social, political, economic equality for everyone. But in reality and in practice, is that really the case? Since its founding, Israel has defined itself as a Jewish and democratic state. And this oxymoron is now reflected in over 60 basic laws that clearly discriminate against Arab citizens. Uh, according to Adala, the legal center uh, uh, in uh, Israel, uh, uh, these laws are uh, a clear indication that uh, you know Israel uh, is a state for its uh, uh, Jewish uh, citizens only, so it's not just a theory. Uh, for, the, for the second time in six months, more Arabs will be voting in Israel than they'll be voting in the, under the Palestinian Authority or in, under Hamas. But that's the irony of it, because Israel has created a system which I think it, it amounts to apartheid, where only one group of people can vote and enjoy full democratic rights, including the settlers, while the other people are deprived of basic uh, uh, civil and uh, democratic rights. Unfortunately, uh, that's not correct. Arabs, as I said, can serve in the Knesset. Uh, the rate of Israeli Arab engineers has more than 20-fold increased in 11 years. They hold but positions in government, they run hospitals, they serve in the military. They enjoy much greater rights than they do in neighboring countries. this is a very narrow perspective. Uh, we should look at the big picture. There, so uh, Israel has divided Palestinians by those for years, for decades, by those who can vote and those who cannot. You have five million Palestinians in Gaza, in the West Bank, in East Jerusalem, who are deprived uh, of the right, or uh, denied the basic right of, to vote and uh, determine their future, while the settlers who live there side by side can vote and enjoy full democratic rights just like the Israeli citizens. Sean, mm -hmm. uh, you said earlier that uh, Israeli Arabs have full rights yes. to, pa to participate in the election, but yes. you know full well, I, I presume, that there is a law that also takes away the right of any Israeli Arab from participating in the election and actually running for the Knesset if they do not implicitly or explicitly agree with the Jewish identity of the state. Let me just quote the law. Any person who expressly or by implication negates the existence of the state of Israel as a Jewish and democratic state is prohibited from running for parliament. Does that mean that they all have if equal you don't rights believe under it, the if law? You, if you don't believe Israel should exist, then no, you don't get to vote. Mm -hmm. If you're against a, a country's legitimate ability to exist, and I, I think that it's, it's striking here that here we are having a debate about Israeli democracy, but there's no talk about the fact that the majority of Palestinians live under the rule of Palestinian Authority or Hamas, the vast majority, who does not allow them to vote. Here we are for the second time in six months. But there months. is no Palestinian state or sovereign a Palestinian state for which you can vote. I mean, this... Can Israel, though, be both democratic and Jewish at the sure. same time? Absolutely. How so if it negates hmm. the rights of its minorities? It doesn't who are, negate those uh, rights. Who constitute 90% of the population. The third largest party in the Knesset right now is led by an Arab. Arabs enjoy greater democratic rights and political equality under Israeli rule in Israel than they do in the Palestinian Authority and Hamas. And if there isn't a state... But that's a tragic reality it, that Israel has created. I think at some point <laughs> Israel must choose between you know, uh, uh, one democratic secular state in which everyone, uh, Palestinians and Jews, can have equal uh, democratic and civil rights, or an apartheid regime where only one group of people enjoy, uh, enjoys like civil, uh, full democratic rights, wh while the other uh, is deprived of basic I, I, I a democracy or an apartheid state. I think well, well, the annexation that we are seeing, the, the, the annexation pledge by Benjamin Netanyahu, that he will, uh, you know, annex all the Jewish settlements. No, that's not what he said. He was talking about the Jordan Valley, and I think it's important and to talk about. And parts of the West Bank. Uh, and and parts of the West Bank, yes. But now, why isn't there a Palestinian state? The Palestinian Authority has rejected offers for statehood three times without counteroffer in the last 20 years alone. Well, so a Palestinian a cliche, state doesn't I mean, exist because Palestinian rulers have not wanted it to exist. All right, but can you address this point? Can Israel claim to be a democracy and yet annex illegally occupied Palestinian land? Well, it's not Palestinian land, first off, because a Palestinian state has never existed. Under international law, it is. It's not Palestinian land. Jews were living in that land when Arabs were in Arabia, when Hittites were in Turkey, and when Phoenicians right, were in We're not going to redefine history, no, but under this international law, it's, history. History. This is it's important occupied history. land. There's, it's I mean, important history. It could be a Palestinian state. It could be a Palestinian state, but Palestinian rulers have declined to make it such. All right, let me, let me ask you about this. The nation-state law also says that the state views the development of Jewish settlement as a national value and will act to encourage and promote its establishment and consolidation. Does it or doesn't it mean favoring the interests of one group of people over the other? It's also incompatible with democracy. I don't think occupation and 
the apartheid and settlements can coexist with democracy. Let's you can't back have to the election, though. There have been slogans, electoral slogans, that obviously Benjamin Netanyahu has used and repeated ad nauseum to appeal to his nationalist, hardline Israeli base. And of course, the rhetoric to Benjamin Netanyahu posted on his Facebook page uh, where he talked about his political rivals being ready to collaborate with, quote, the Arabs who want to destroy all Israeli Jews, including women, children, and men. And it was so appalling that Facebook actually uh, suspended his account. Uh, Netanyahu, I mean, has gone to extreme limits to intimidate, terrorize the Arab population, including, including his demands to install cameras in uh, Arab polling stations, uh, his uh, demands to uh, he backed also attempts to disqualify and ban uh, Arabs, uh, Arab parties uh, from running in the election. He has called out, Arab though. parties a uh, terrorist uh, and uh, conspiring to destroy Israel. The, the, one of the benefits, I think, that needs also be mentioned here is that Israel is an independent judiciary where, where the means of redress are much greater than even in the United States. So if an Israeli Arab citizen has a problem with any of this, they can take it to the courts. Sure, but if Israel is the vibrant democracy that you believe it is, mm -hmm. why then? Are its main politicians and political parties so bent on suppressing the voice and the vote of its minority? I don't think those are the people that are bent on suppressing it. The people that are bent on suppressing it are those that are calling for boycotts. I think that that is what suppresses a vote. That, <laughs> that in definition, is, is suppression. Well, you've, ta well, you've heard uh, Benjamin Netanyahu talk about uh, uh, Arab Israelis coming in droves to the polling stations, being bused to those polling stations. We also know through an investigation done by an Israeli channel, Channel 12, yeah. that there was an ad campaign that was funded by hardline Israelis to target uh, Arab Israelis and keep them away from the polling stations. Well, what, Isn't what that you've intimidation? Seen here is, is an attempt to drive turnout based off of fear. I think it's not the problem is uh, uh, I think runs deeper than that. Netanyahu has also uh, remember allied himself with Utsmai Odit, Jewish power. I mean these are neo kahanists the acolytes of the late Meir Kahana, who actually advocated ethnic cleansing of Palestinians and to expel Palestinians from Palestine. Uh, and if the party makes uh, passes the uh, threshold, this will it will be a uh, part of the uh, Benjamin Netanyahu's government. So you have the uh, Israeli KKK. Imagine uh, Donald Trump is inviting the KKK to sit in a government with him. So this if is we're, if we're going to talk about genocide and the KKK, you have the leader of the Palestinian Authority, which refuses to recognize Israel's legitimacy. You have Hamas, which quotes favorably Hitler's charter. And you have, you can sit there I, today. I think to be accurate, what he's refused to do is to recognize the Jewish nature of the Israeli state. No, he, uh, that's, that's uh, but, actually but, but, not correct. But getting back to the election, are you surprised, though, that it isn't just Benjamin Netanyahu and, as I say, other mainstream politicians utilizing a certain type of, uh, of rhetoric, but it's also centrist parties and politicians. Take, for example, Yair Lapid, a centrist, the number two of the Blue and White Coalition, which is hoping to unseat uh, Likud, uh, um, Likud and Benjamin Netanyahu. He has said this, I am and I have been against any kind of state of all its citizens my entire life. I think that what we've seen uh, in the last two decades, post-Second Intifada, is a very jaded public that views that the, that the, views that the Palestinian Authority no longer wants peace, wants a two-state solution. And um, you have the uh, Palestinian leaders refusing to meet with Israeli leaders. Well, forget about uh, the Palestinian Authority. I mean, she's talking about uh, uh, political, leading political candidates like Benny Gantz and Yair Lapid, who had vowed not to sit in a government with Arabs, no matter what the uh, election result. And this is a political taboo in Israel to the extent that some Israeli politicians like uh, uh, Tsipi Lipni uh, uh, in 2008 would prefer not to form a government and lead the country than sit in uh, a government with Arabs. And, and that yet, doesn't mean that Arabs want to sit in a government uh, with, with, with Benny Gantz, who actually who started his uh, campaign by uh, boasting how he bombed Gaza back in the, uh, to the Middle East. Right, uh, uh, boasting about how he took the fight to Hamas. So, so just mm -hmm. in conclusion, how do you both see the political process evolving in Israel? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't matter who wins the election or forms a new government. Uh, none of the leading candidates ha has a uh, uh, plan for peace or uh, seeks to end the occupation or lift the blockade on Gaza. Uh, all have vowed not to sit in a government with the uh, Arabs. Uh, all uh, rejected uh, Arab uh, Palestinian uh, citizen demands to abolish the uh, racist nation state law and to offer uh, equal rights guarantees. So I think uh, um, whether Netanyahu wins or not, the Israel's trajectory is clear. 
more settlements and more annexation of Palestinian lands across the border and fewer and fewer civil and democratic, uh, democratic rights inside. And for you, less peace, more segregation, or the other way around, Sean Well, I'm actually going to agree with what Siraj said in this first part. Um, I don't think it matters who wins because the Palestinian leaders refuse to sit down for bilateral negotiations, which they're required to do, to create a Palestinian state. I do think that the way forward is going to be more efforts on coexistence and hopefully, hopefully one day we can have a panel where we talk about Palestinian democracy, where they have leaders that are willing to sit down for peace. When there is a Palestinian state, uh, hopefully. That's All what right. the talks are for. Yeah. All right, we'll leave it there for now. Siraj Asi and Sean Derns, thank you both very much. Thank, thank you. So thank much. you. And so when annexation and segregationist policies become mainstream electoral pledges, no matter who becomes prime minister, this campaign has demystified the notion of a democratic state of Israel. Likud's campaign platform has proven what many have long suspected, that Israel is turning its back on an elusive peace by embracing what some prominent politicians here in the US are calling extreme right-wing and racist policies. From me, Rida Fakhri, and all the team here in Washington, Thanks for watching. See you next time.